Hi everyone, Flaming Footy here and welcome or welcome back to another YouTube video on the channel and today guys we are going to be continuing continuing our AFL 2022 match reviews in today's video. Another three games of the start of round nine and big three games there that we had um, and Collingwood versus Western Bulldogs started on the Friday night, Hawthorne versus Richmond the first game on the Saturday and the most recent of them all, North Melbourne versus Port Adelaide. So we're going to be taking an in-depth review on all these games in today's video. So let's not waste any time. We've been starting these pretty well and nice and early. Let's not waste any time. Get right into things with Collingwood versus Western Bulldogs at Marvel Stadium on the Friday night to begin round number nine. So round nine did not start well for Collingwood, who just manufactured. They only manufactured seven nine fifty one seven goals nine, uh, and they only recorded the sixteen scoring shots compared to the Western Bulldogs fourteen fifteen ninety nine, who start the round in a perfect way. Now this game actually went in being a fifty fifty, and I was actually quite surprised to see the margin be this. Now the Dogs they are back to their very good old side. Obviously they have been a little bit trouble lately. The Pies they've had a good start to the year. Are they going to drop off? What's next for Collingwood? We're not quite entirely sure. But for the Dogs, I feel like they can really make a rush for the top eight. And it started with six goals in the first term to one. And you, you just knew it. It was 9 to 41. And it was going to get tough uh, for Collingwood. And in the second quarter... Again, not, neither team. It was actually quite a boring second quarter, to be completely honest. The margin never really went anywhere. Uh, third quarter, it was Western Bulldogs. And final term was... Also, Western Bulldogs. It wasn't great for Collingwood. Um, they just they had moments of the game where they came and charged back, but again, just didn't manage to do enough to even be close to taking this game out of the Western Bulldogs. Uh, they always had a handy three goal plus lead on the Pies. Uh, forty one disposals for Smith, three goals for Norton. Uh, Adam Trillor, one hundred thirty four fantasy. Tommy Rattori, eight tackles. Uh, but yeah, it was. The big players that really stepped up for the Dogs and some of the others as well. It was just a great team effort from the Western Bulldogs, who, of course, they needed this win. They needed to make a statement. And if it wasn't against a the power, they had to do it against someone. And Collingwood was the team they did it against. Look at that. Look at that. 134, Trelaw, 125, Fantasy, Libertore, 123, McRae, 123, Daniel, 119, Bont, 116, Smith, 113, Day, uh, Dunkley, 106, Dale. That is all. That is all Western Bulldogs. Then look at that. Three goals, two Norton. Three goals, one Trelaw. Three goals, one Karmis. Um, and then three goals for Dunkley. That's all Western Bulldogs. Um, and then again, two goals for Crisp uh, as well. The only multiple goal scorer for Collingwood. Disposals, 41 for Smith. 37 for McCrack. 35 for Trelaw. 34 for Daniel. 31 for Libba. 29 for Dale. And 26 for Bontempelli. Again, what is that? That's all Western Bulldogs. That just goes to show how much they own this game. 11 marks for Dale, 10 for Daniel, and 9 for Howe, Richards, Dunkley. So, again, getting the marks. Uh, 8 tackles for Tom Libertore. He was best on... Well, he led that uh, stat on the ground. Darcy Cameron, 33 hitouts. Had a... I mean, it was two very inexperienced. Ruckman, Cameron versus Sweet um, as well. So, Cameron, 33 hitouts. 26 for Sweet. Uh, 9 for Cordy. Five for Beg, so that's who went in and did the ruck. So very uh, unexperienced um, or inexperienced group. Disposals, kicks, handles, inside 50s, all dominated by the Western Bulldogs. So this was them back to their dominant form, really. This is them back to their dominant form. Their, their midfield was uh, up and going as well. So that that's, um, yeah, look at that. All of that there, that the, position, the possession heat map in the uh, forward half of the ground. Uh, well, not forward half, sorry, in the midfield, and, and that's where it does start, uh, is in the midfield. If your midfield works from centre clearances, you can be oh so dangerous. Uh, and the Dogs, they led the entire contest and had no real problem winning this one. The Dogs walk home easily by 48 points in a big game that really shows that they're ready for finals this year. On to the game earlier today, Hawthorne versus Richmond. Hawthorne 14, 10, 94 go down to Richmond 17, 15, 117 in Richmond. They've they've been good in the past few weeks. They have really, really, really done well. And um the Hawks, they did have moments in this game though. First quarter, the Hawks did end up leading at quarter time after a 50-50 first quarter. Second quarter, the Hawks got out to about a 26, I would say, or 25-point lead, um, which had them yeah, which had them well ahead. Um, and they 
uh, Richmond, they just they did bring it back, but look at that staircase there for Hawthorne. Richmond brought it back all pretty much through the second and the third quarter. It was a gradual thing uh, while only allowing Hawthorne to get the one goal in that time, and they managed to stock up on a few more. And then the final term, just this little mini staircase here just allowed them to go and win the game. The Hawks came within, I don't know, about 10 or so points in the final term, but just couldn't snatch it. And the Tigers, too good again. Too good again, and they've been good this year, the Tigers. 28 spells for Dion Prestia, 4 goals for Lynch, 109 fancy for Sicily, 8 tackles for Kane Lambert. But the Tigers, they are real. I reckon they could be making finals this year. Yes, they may have had a few easier opponents in the past few weeks, being West Coast, Collingwood and Hawthorne, but they've still, like, Hawthorne and Collingwood aren't the easiest of opponents, and they did this really well. 109 fantasy for Sicily, 102 for Bolton, um, 99 for Impey. But if you have one more thing going back to Rich from there, their wins against Collingwood and Hawthorne have been impressive as well. They haven't just got the four points. They've done the job on, on these occasions as well by a margin, um, by a decent margin as well. Four goals for Lynch, three for Revolt. Lewis, what a handy inclusion he is. Three goals for Bruce as well. Three for Martin, really getting really getting the goals this round. Um, 25 spells for Impey. 24 for Sicily, Baker and Daniel Rioli. 28 for Presser, as I said, and 22 for Newcomb. Um, how good is he? And also Cotron uh, racks up 22 as well. Tackles, uh, 8 for Lambert, 7 for Bolton and Baker. We'll go back to the marks. 9 for Sicily. He does do it every time, does James Sicily. A marking machine, that man. Hit outs, 35 for Nan Curves, 25 for Soldo, 15 for Lynch, 7 for Kaczynski. So it was a hit out day for the Tigers. Um, inside 50s, they did lead, and the Tigers they have been pretty dominant as well this year. They've been a pretty good team, a, a pretty good team. They've really found some really good form with a great list in the last few weeks as well. Hit outs, they smash the Hawks. Center clearances, they smash the Hawks as well. So yeah, um, the Hawks got a few smashings in that stat there. Um, nothing else is looking like nothing else is looking amazing. 81 minutes is what the Tigers led for compared to 36, uh, 37, sorry, for the Hawks. Um, and that is it. So the Tigers walk away with a very, very impressive win over the Hawks. The Hawks, I don't know where this really leaves them. They've had a couple of losses in a row now. Um, yes, uh, I think they've had, yeah, had a couple of losses in a row. They lost to Essendon last week, the Hawks. And they did actually play out this game, but yeah, the Tigers, they, they were just a better team. And the Tigers have been looking pretty good this year, and especially in the last few rounds, they've really fine touched themselves. Now, just so you all know, the effort is definitely there to get these match reviews out ASAP after the game is finished, because you can still see the listen live there for North Melbourne versus Port Adelaide. That game finished not too long ago, and I will give you an update on Geelong versus St Kilda uh, in just a moment, but... North Melbourne, 6 10, 46, gets smashed by Port Adelaide, 17 13, 115. Now, the thing with this game was that North Melbourne were actually in this game for three quarters of the game. They just let slip later. Now, the margin was consistently around 30, however, and it was the first quarter that changed this game from North Melbourne to being in it and out of it like that. Um, it was, um, yeah, dominant for Port Adelaide in the first quarter, 9 to 41. Actually, the same score as, um, as, um, Collingwood versus Western Bulldogs as well. Second term, third term, not a lot happened. The margin stayed pretty much the same. In fact, I think I think it was thirty. Yeah, it was thirty two at quarter time, thirty one at half time, and thirty two at three quarter time. And then the final margin extends out to sixty nine when Port Adelaide run home in the final term and bang on the goals. So. Again, they were impressive in this game, the power, for two quarters, pretty much. They managed to hold it for uh, two quarters and extend for two quarters as well. And North Melbourne were never in this game. They had chances to pounce, but again, a team that's not too great probably wouldn't pounce. They did score 46, which for them could be a little bit higher than what they would normally go. They scored 24 against Freo, so that is almost doubling their score, which is nice. But they were in this game. They actually had a couple of quarters. Quarter two and quarter three were actually won the quarter. Um, they stopped Port Adelaide from scoring and scored their own. So, yeah, they were impressive in a few quarters, but they just ma didn't manage to bring back the margin. 32 throws for Wines, 128 fantasy for Wines, six tackles for Luke Davies, Uniac, and three goals for Zerha. Um as well. So we'll go to the goals behind. Three goals for Zerha, Marshall and Georgiades. Two goals for Wines, Finn Layson, Motlop and Dersma. Uh, now Larky did only get the one goal one as well. So they did manage to keep him fairly quiet, the power. Um, 128 fantasy for Wines, 106 for Amon, 
100 for Luke Davies, Uniac. Um, we'll go to disposals. 32 for Wines, 27 for Rosie, 26 for uh, Anderson, and 25 for Davies, Uniac, and Butters. We'll go to the marks now. 9 for Bernie Jones and Georgiades, 8 for Bailey Scott, tackles, 6 for Davies, Uniac, 5 for um, Bozabal. I've got no idea. 5 for um, Bozen Avalagi. Boz and Velagi, something like that. I think that's how you say it. I've got no idea. But, again, too many tricky names in the AFL. Uh, and then five for Dan Houston. Uh, 32 hitouts for Hayes. 26 for Goldie. Um, six for Callum Common, Jones. Three for Power Pepper. And two for Wines. So, Wines getting thrown in there. And one for Finn Lason as well. So, uh, interesting. Now, there, we're going to team stats again. Disposals. Inside, which is all in favour of the power. Um, and then... And then here, our clearances were in favour of the power as well. Um, not by massive margins, but still they were in favour of the power, which can be game, um, which can be game important. Uh, and then marks, marks inside fifty dominated with the power. The power they were happy to share it around inside fifty as well and get a certain team goal, which which is what you like to see as well. The power led for the entire game had no problems there. The power they had no problems in this game. They were always up. They had a healthy 30-point margin, um, and North Melbourne never really looked like charging. And, wow, four on the trot. Now, next week, the power have the Cats. Will that end their streak, or will they keep their streak of glory going? Now, let's go to the ladder. Well, yes, to the ladder and outro. So, right now, at Marvel Stadium, the Cats are cruising away from the Saints. They currently lead by 14 uh, after fast starts to both teams. Both teams getting a goal within the first two minutes of the game, showing that we could be in for a high-scoring, free-flowing game. It has dried out a little bit, but the Cats lead 13-27 to 27 so far. And then Sydney Essen and Adelaide Brisbane will also be included in next match reviews. Uh, big game for both Sydney and Essendon. Sydney, this is really going to tell us where they're at. Adelaide versus Brisbane. Will Adelaide pull off upset of the year if they manage to win it? Uh, Gold Coast versus Freo, big game for both these two teams. Can Gold Coast start actually attacking and getting wins? Or will the Dockers go... 8-1 and one, uh, in what a stellar season they're having. GWS versus Carlton. Leon Cameron, of course, uh, not sure if you know, Leon Cameron will be leaving. So will he get the fairy tale end to his coaching year at the Giants or will the Blues uh, spoil the party and win another important game? And West Coast versus Melbourne. Uh, pretty much what I would say is how big can Melbourne win um, and where are the Eagles at? But that is it for today's match review. We may as well go to the ladder. That's how it's looking right now. So I feel like, is that the Port Adelaide? Yes, that is the Port Adelaide result as well included. So yes, there we go. We've got the live, well, the updated ladder, of course, not with Geelong versus St. Kilda, but if Geelong do cruise the victory, they will go into the top four awaiting Carlton's result on Sunday. And St. Kilda will be going down all the way down to 8th, which they are currently still in 8th anyway. Big game, that one, of course. So, that is going to be it for today's match review. Now, we'll go back um, to the Round 9 centre. But, thank you guys all so much for watching. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. So, then you guys will never miss another video on the channel. St Kilda vs Geelong, Sydney vs Essendon, Adelaide vs Brisbane in next, uh, in next match reviews. So thank you guys all so much for watching. So bye everyone, Flaming Footy out.